Okay, welcome all to this video. We are going to calculate the electric field with Python. This is going to be quick because it's mostly a review. So here we go. First of all, let's talk about the displacement vector because suppose I have some charge right here, the blue, the blue circle, and it's at some location R1, and I want to find the electric field at position R2. So none of them are at their origin. So you can't just say, oh, well, here's, here's R. And we need that vector R from the charge to the location where we're trying to find the electric field. So in this case, this diagram, if you look at vector R1, and if you look at vector R2, the vector R would be vector R2 minus vector R1. It's the same as displacement, okay? It's the same as delta R, because we're going, we're moving. It's like we're moving. So we need that vector. So if I have the vector location of the charge and the point where we want to find the electric field, that's how I find the vector r. Now the other thing that we're going to need is the unit vector because uh, we're going to calculate the electric field and we're going to use scalars, but at the end of the day we need it as a vector. So the unit vector is the direction from the charge to the point of location. It's not the distance. So it's, in fact, it's that vector displacement divided by the magnitude, and that's a unit vector. We use the symbol r hat to represent our, the unit vector, um, and you can calculate it this way, but there's another way to calculate it too. And yes, that is confusing, okay? But we need the unit vector in order to get electric field as a vector. So here is how we calculate the electric field due to point charge. We have some charge Q, and we have some observation location right here, the blue dot. And so we, we need to find that vector r. And then we can find the vector e. Well, this is the definition of e, depending on the force. So if you know the Coulomb force, you can find it. Uh, this is the, the version that you're going to see in a textbook, k, q over r squared. But it's not a vector. And k is this constant. So this equation shows us the best calculation for the electric field. K times Q divided by the magnitude of R squared, and then we multiply by R hat. So here you can see that if this is the vector R, this would be R hat. And when I multiply that constant by R hat, I get a vector right there. If What happens if I change the charge? What if this is a negative charge? R is still that way, but now this Q value is negative. So if I multiply R hat by a negative sign, it points in the opposite direction, and the electric field would point toward the charge. Okay, so here is what we're going to do. Here's the problem that I want to solve. So here I have a, a charge uh, with a charge of 5 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. It's at this location, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, negative 0.1 meters. I just made that up, okay? And I want to find the electric field right here at 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.2 meters. So I'm going to use this equation. So I'm going to, sh you can, you should be able to do this by hand, at the very least, calculate this distance and find the scalar value of the magnetic, the electric field. But I'm going to do it in Python, and then I'm going to show you how to visualize it too. Okay, so here is Python. So this is Trinket. Uh, you can't see the whole thing right now. Let me just go over here and click New Trinket. And I want a glow script. Okay, and I'm going to move it back right there. And then it's going to say, well, what kind? I want Python. And let's just move this up so we can see more. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put in some constants here. So I have uh, Q equals 5 times 10 to the negative 9th. Cool. I can put a comment in there if I want. K equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. I'm not going to put the comment in. I'm trying to go fast. Okay. Now let's just define our two vectors. R1 is the vector uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, negative 0.1. And R2, and this is straight from that previous slide, R2 is the vector 0 0.1, 0 0.8, 0 0.2. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is calculate that vector R. The vector R is going to be R is R2 minus R1. If I want to, I could print it out, but I don't have to. So let's just print that out just to see if things are working. So print R and run it. So that you can calculate that by hand, and that should be the right answer. Okay, But I don't actually need R. There are two other things I need to calculate the electric field. The first thing I need is the magnitude of R. 
You don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to do this. So this is the mag function is built into Python, GlowScript Python. And it takes a vector and returns a scalar. Let's just print our mag. See, it's a scalar. Okay, and again, you can check that. Next, I need our hat, which is that unit vector. Again, this is built into Python. Let's print that out just for fun. The nice thing about Python is that you can build a program part of the way and run it and print things out to make th sure things are working. So there, you can't see the whole thing, but there it is. Okay, so I'm pretty happy. Now we can calculate the electric field. So we're, I'm going to say uh, E equals K times Q times R hat divided by R mag squared. Now, if you did this, I'd understand that looks like it makes sense, but that doesn't work. And Python squared is star star two. Oops, not equals. Star star two. And let's say print E. Oops, I made a mistake. I put G instead of Q there. And see, if you look down here, G is not defined. I did that on purpose so you can see what a mistake looks like. Boom, there's your electric field. Uh, let's print out the magnitude to print mag E. Okay, so you should be able to check that. You should be able to check those values and see if they make sense to you. Um, so let's. So I have my constants, I have my position of my charge, position of my observation location, uh, find R, find the magnitude, find R hat, find E. Now let's just go up here, if I change this to zero, let's just change this to change one of these things to zero and rerun it, I get different results. I don't have to recalculate. It calculates it for me. And you may say, hey, that's kind of awesome. And that's correct. Okay, I'm going kind of fast because I don't want to um, yeah, let's say one more thing. Print, I could do this. E equals. You can put a, a note in there and I could put uh, E. So you can put any strings you want in there. You can add in units, let's say. So it looks nice. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Now I run it. And then it, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's do the next thing. So let's say, uh, I'd make a 3D visualization of this. So I'm going to say uh, Q ball equals sphere, position equals R1, radius equals, um, let's say, 0 0.01. I'm just going to leave it like that and run it. You see what happened is it actually made a 3D output and there's my sphere right there and it's actually in 3D and you can rotate it around. You can zoom in and out and all sorts of stuff. So I'm actually making, this is a built-in object in Python that makes that sphere. Uh, I, I give it a position, R1. You could also say, I could do this, vector 0, 0, 0. R1 was a vector and I'll put it at the center right there. Okay. So you could do whatever you want there. It has to be a vector though. Put it as R1. I can also give it a color. Uh, color equals color dot red. And you have to spell color right. Right there. Check that out. Okay. Now let's put another dot uh, where we want to look at the observation location. So observation is also a sphere, position is R2, and the radius is, uh, let's say it's smaller, 0 0.005, and let's just leave it as white, or gray, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, there it is up there, I don't know if you can see that. It's way up here, it's not very big. Let's, put it, let's just put it at one. There, there's my charge and there's my thing. Okay, now I want to calculate the electric field, I already did that. I'm going to make another object, E arrow. It's a type of object called an arrow. And it's going to have the position is going to be the observation location. It has to be a vector. The other property is the axis, which is the length of, the, of this arrow. And let's put that as E. And let's say it's color equals color dot yellow. 
Now I'm going to run it and it's going to go crazy. So, I don't even see it. Well, it's it's not working because the arrow is too big. Let's see. I did have E. Let's see. Print. Let's just check. E arrow dot axis. I just want to see if it's actually making that arrow. I didn't do that. So there's a problem. It didn't even get here. Print one. It print one, but it didn't. E arrow position equals. Ah, I got it. The, pos the position is the observation location. Obs OBS is the sphere. The position of that is dot POS. There we go. You can't even see the points. They're too small because this arrow is ginormous. So I could just say uh, multiply this by 0 0.01 times. I'll make it smaller. Let's see if that's small enough. Make it even smaller. There. Now you can kind of see, uh, there's my charge, there's my uh, electric field vector. Let's just move that. Let's put it, let's put it down here at zero. Let's put it at uh, zero, zero, zero. And run it. There, that looks even better. So there's my charge and there's my electric field. Let's change the value of the charge to negative. Now you see it, it changed direction. It's pointing towards there. So you can move this, you can put this wherever you want, and it'll show you a, a visualization of the electric field. Uh, there's a better way to do this scale, but for right now, I think that's good enough. Uh, and this is, you don't need this visualization to calculate things. It's just there to help you. Uh, so that's it. Hope that helps.